And just to mention that we, obviously there's been a Blackboard content editor for forever, but there was a big change in the content editor as of November 5th of 2020. Isn't it great that, you know, there, there wasn't really any changes at all in 2020. So Blackboard decided, yeah, well, let's make this small change in our environment. So uh, not a big deal for the most part, but um, certainly some changes that need to be uh, talked about here today. And we did a, what we call quick hit on this back in December sometime. And hopefully, um, I think since it's just the two of you here today, it may, ended up, may end up being a little bit more of that as well. But I thought that I would really reach out to you guys to find out very specifically if there is anything particular that you wanted to understand about the content editor. You know, I can go through the gyrations that I have planned here, but before we get too far down the road, I wanna know what your thoughts are either about um, doing anything, whether it was because the content editor changed or not, or something you needed to know specifically because of the change that happened in November. So Diane, anything to offer there? No, my, my things are like little bits of frustration when I'm trying to use it or copy things. And like, even if I'm trying, you know, to move through a couple different courses where I'm putting the same stuff in, the formatting sometimes gets funky. So I'm just looking for like tips like that, like how to display things, the spacing gets weird. Um, I just don't know if I'm not using it right, if there is something somewhere I'm not noticing that I should be doing when I try to do that stuff. Okay, uh, fair question. And um, uh, maybe I can um, make you feel a little less frustrated, maybe not by telling you that even our IDs in our office who work in the damn platform every day um, get frustrated about those kinds of things too. Um, and uh, I, I may not have um, exactly the information that you need, but I'll show you a few of the tricks that I know and maybe Sandy can offer some things there too. So thanks. John, how about you? Nothing specific. Just okay. here to hear what you have to say. Oh, John, I feel so sorry for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so was the joke good enough? You want to leave now, John? <laughs> I like the joke, but, you know, you got to watch your audience because some people won't understand what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Definitely good <laughs> advice. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll tell <laughs> anybody under what should we say? Uh, 30? Uh, anybody under 30? Just close your ears on this. You never know. Uh, I mean... I have a son who's 22. He certainly knows all about it, but he, he likes music too. So maybe it matters what you're into. So. All right, enough of that. Uh, so today uh, I probably will just spend most of the time right in the Blackboard environment. I don't have um, a presentation like a PowerPoint or anything like that prepared. I'll show you what I do have for you. Share my screen and give you this bit of information. I think it's this one. All right, hopefully you can see that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share that with you. And, um, but I, you know, I often start sessions actually with uh, information about where you can get help uh, on your own because, you know, we're not always here at the, when you need us, number one. And, uh, I think of, oh my gosh, we got two of you today out of about 687 uh, faculty that we have. So there's other people that may need these resources too. And I, we try to make them available. By the way, uh, Sarah wants to let you know real quick that we're going to have our own OLET website soon, right, Sarah? Are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Sorry. Yes, we are. Um, I definitely had that in mind to tell you right now. <laughs> what platform? Tell me the platform you're using. Um, it's a WordPress site. Mm, okay. um, in March, I think we are doing that. And if you are not receiving our newsletter, you should be. Um, oh, see, I gave you a doorway, Sarah. Now you're, you're taking it. Yep, I'll put a sign up link in the chat um, and let Joe get back to talking. Thanks. 
All right, so uh, as you can see, some of these items that are right here are coming directly off of the Blackboard help site. Uh, you know, the content editor is part and parcel to pretty much everything you do and your students do inside of Blackboard. So you're gonna find it on a page where you're putting an item. You're gonna find it on a page where you're putting a URL. You're gonna find it on a page where you're putting a assignment. You're going to find it on a page where you're <laughs> everywhere is where the content editor is, including the discussion boards, uh, even when you're given feedback in the grade center, uh, you're actually using the content editor. There's there's sort of a, a mini one, but you can explode the mini one into uh, a full blown content editor and uh, you're going to see all of the features of that editor. Uh, in all these various places throughout Blackboard. So as we know, there's various types of content that you can put in the editor and we'll look at some of those um, items, documents, et cetera. And, and this might be uh, a little bit about what Diane was looking for, but working with text, all right? And how you deal with formatting and stuff like that, that should be helpful. Um, and then particularly more information about the editor and what it does. Specifically about the upgrade, um, I found these two resources here, did a pretty good job of explaining it, external to NCC. But at NCC, we also created a video. This was done by Lauren uh, back in November after they made the adjustment. And uh, there is a good video for you to watch on your own time if you want to understand some of the differences. And then there's also this um, actual comparison tool that was put out by Blackboard, okay? So I just want you to be aware that there is this sheet and I will be sharing it with you. I'm trying to remember if I have the link at my disposal. All right, we'll get back to that later. All right, now I'm going to stop sharing that and I'm going to go over to that board. Okay, let's see. Did I do that right? Can you see my Blackboard course? Yep. Yep. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> okay. So uh, as indicated, just about everywhere you go, hey, even if you're going to make an announcement, right? boom, boom, we create an announcement. What do we see? We see a title always, and then we see this box where we put our text in. So this is what we call the content editor. Now, um, not that you care, but uh, the tool that's been in there for my goodness, Sandy, ever since we moved over to the nine version back in 2011, I don't think that that editor has really changed much. Um, they certainly added a couple of these tools, tool buttons in it um, in the last 10 years. But right now they're actually using a whole different product created by uh, actually a separate entity. It's called Tiny URL. So they've licensed this product and they put it into Blackboard's platform. The the one reason they did that is because it has a few more capabilities than the previous one did. Uh, it looks maybe a little bit more current by web standards and things like that these days, uh, et cetera. And I think as before, hopefully what you'll notice in the content editor is you have a set of tools, right? And similar as before too, sometimes these tools or toolbars aren't fully uh, available to you. And this button up here at the top right can make them more fully available. So this ellipsis just basically toggles from being one line to multiple lines of the content editor. Uh, the other thing about the content editor is, uh, this one doesn't look like I can do that here. Hmm. Very strange, I was looking for um, the extender so that I can make this larger, but I don't see it here. I'm missing something, Sandy. Is it just not in the announcements? That doesn't make sense. Um, it, you know, it may just be not in the, or just kind of um, enter, enter all the way down and see if it expands that way. All right. Let me just I didn't think there was a limit on it. Oh, yeah, it shouldn't be. Just, you know, if you want to see more space. So if I'm going to build 
an item. Of course, we're going to see the content editor there as well. Wow, this may be something I totally missed before. Um, unless there's, there's two two little buttons at the end of the toolbar. There's like the the four arrows, and then there's the plus. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 one thing. So that, what that does is that expands it. it yeah, it's going to blow it out into its own page, but. Um, that was available as well before in the previous editor. Let me just get out of that. But in addition to that, not too far. Where'd it go? <laughs> Thank you. But in addition to that, you were able to just drag the handle of the editor here and you know make it larger right within the context of this page which sometimes was good enough so um i guess what i'm going to say to you just at the onset here is uh, while blackboard's choice to bring a new editor in here gave them and us a few more capabilities it also changed the behavior a little bit and maybe a little bit of your workflow and uh, one Thing in particular I'll just bring up right away that some people have already screamed about actually is that um, you'll notice as you create items in the editor let's see um, if I want to say happy birthday um, you'll notice you're not getting any automatic spell checking going on right so you literally do have to, and I beg your pardon if it takes me a while to find some of these tools that I'm not an expert at using the editor yet. Where's spell check? It's probably... It's, you know, um, it, oh, wait a minute. Where is it? ABC in the second line. There it is, ABC. Right. You actually have to hit the spell check button yeah. for it to bring up a um, modal. Sometimes, sometimes we call this a modal, a light box, to actually go through and, you know, fix the things that you want rather than having squiggly lines here bringing it to your attention. So make sure that that's part of your workflow. So after you're done, you know, putting everything into your editor, especially text, that you actually click on this button if you're interested in making sure that there's a spell check that's being done on your typing. Uh, I certainly need that, uh, obviously, based on what I wrote here. Uh, but that's a good one to note. Uh, I can tell you that, um, you know, Blackboard's well aware of the uh, dissatisfaction with people on this one. And uh, there was something about when they rolled this out, it was, if they left that on automatically, it was creating some other problems. There is the capability for that to be automatic, but for the time being, Blackboard has left that off until they sort of resolve the problems that it creates. But the capability will probably be there in one of the updates down the road. Just a, a nuisance for now. Okay, so that said, I talked about more tool buttons. I talked about blowing out the, um, the content editor. Let's talk a little bit more about formatting for Diane's sake. So similarly, Diane, uh, you have all these tools to format inside the editor. And we have always said that it's a great idea, especially if you're copy and pasting information to ensure that when you put it in the editor, you try to minimize the formatting of your source wherever you're bringing that information from. And believe me, that can be wherever you bring the information from. So whether it's a Word doc or a web page um, or anything else, when you copy from those items, there is definitely some formatting that will come along with it. Now, the good thing about uh, this, this editor is formatting can be relatively easily stripped by using this tool. And we had the tool in the previous editor too, but this one seems to do a better job of it. So if you wanted to make sure that your formatting was stripped, if you brought it in from something else, you click on this button and it just basically wipes it out. And I suggest to you that you utilize all the tools here to reformat your document, your information, et cetera, the way that you want to. This will alle alleviate some of the struggle that you might have 
where it seems like it's not working from one uh, one course to another. Um, you know, when you bring it over from Word, if you might have a bulleted list or something like that, and you throw it in here, it's really not behaving the way you want to, and you end up struggling with that. So my suggestion would be to actually, you know, clear the formatting and then come back and use the tools that are actually in the editor itself. Um, the one other thing I can suggest to you, Diane, because you did say something about from course to course is it might be better for you instead of, I, I, I'm going to jump at something because I just thought of something in particular. So sometimes what people do, and what I'm going to do is just going to create another page here. Okay, so I'm still on that. All right, now I'm going to go back to where I was. All right. So sometimes what people do um, let's see if I have a good example here. I don't want to use a test. Come on, just give me some. Okay. No, that's not good either. Sorry. Okay. Let's, let's say this one right here. Sometimes what people do when they're copying and pasting and putting something in an editor that they may either have already in their course or they're moving it from one course to another is they'll do something like this. Okay. And then they'll throw that, they'll copy this, and then they'll paste it in the editor. Well, that's not really a good idea to take what's being displayed actually on the content page or the web page of the Blackboard course. What you should do is you should literally go into the item that you want to copy, edit it, all right, and pick it up either this way from within the editor and then paste it into the new editor. But what would be even better than that? Okay, so I'm giving you a couple of different things here. So if we were to bring what I just had up there into this editing page, okay, what I suggest we do is literally go to the source code behind here because it may have some formatting that you like. And the source code tool is right here. So this brings you to the HTML that's behind what's going on in the editor and which will end up displaying the way you want it to on your actual Blackboard content page and actually just copy this material. Control C, you can cancel out of that, go over to where you're copying to, go into the editor again, right? And then we were just sort of adding this. So I'm going to add a couple of lines, do a Control V, that's what's coming over. We're saving this. Now we're working, you know, a little bit of programming, coding here, but it's really an, a very simple tool to use right here in the editor that Blackboard provides to us. So now this particular piece that I put in here has exactly the same formatting of where we took it from, and that is, uh, you know, another course, if that's what you're trying to do. Did that ring any bells for you at all, Diane? I just want to see if I've touched on anything for you there. Yes, and I have to use the source code and a couple other tools I'm using, so I'm not, that makes a lot of sense. So okay. um, that's yeah. a good tip. The other thing I do so, is a lot of times I just copy the item from the course that I'm moving it to, and I, I found that that's taking care of some of that frustration too. Oh, oh, absolutely. If you're literally using the copy process inside of Blackboard, um, that's probably the better way to go. And you can do that with most things on content pages on Blackboard. Uh, you can't do it with tools, but anything that actually is a piece of content or things like that, you can bring those over using the copy process in, in Blackboard. And just to be sure John is aware of what I'm talking about there, uh, I'll just go ahead and submit that. We're gonna have a bit. Oh, I got it. Telling me, Joe, wake up. You got to put something in the title. Uh, Joe's title. All right, we'll submit that and get that out of the way. Of course, it always shows up on the bottom here. All right, now I forgot what I was going to explain. Um, that what was I going to explain, guys. If we're doing that, what brain did copy in an item, I think. Oh, thank you. Okay, so for instance, what I just created, if I want to put it in another course, I can use this copy tool. You know, I can do that if I am actually 
the instructor in both courses. You can't copy from somebody else's course into your course, but from course to course that you have access to, you can actually copy individual items or you can even move them. So when you do the copy process here, it actually says to you, well, okay, tell me where this, where you're copying this to. Okay. You've got the course, you can choose a different course and you've got a location in that you're copying. The one question I have on this screen typically is where it was the attachments and embedded links. I don't know the difference between those two options. Um, and I'm not always sure that I'm choosing the right one. Are you on talking about this in the editor now? Um, no, back in the copy item screen. Sure. Yep. Sorry, there's a question that I, I thought of when I saw that screen again. No problem. So we're going here, choosing copy, and you're asking what? A little bit farther down on this, after you choose the destination, here in the attachments and embedded links, I don't mm -hmm. know the difference between these two options, the copy links or the include them. Um, okay. Okay. So the reason the bottom one is highlighted because it's the, I'll call it safer, more conservative approach, but it's actually replicating content, right? Not a big deal. But if you chose this top one, rather than replicating content, it's, it's literally just linking to where that content is. Now that's okay, as long as wherever it's linking to, if it's another course or another part of the course, that that doesn't go away, okay? Whereas if you include the links and you actually make copies, that stuff, that material becomes part and parcel to that course, if it came from another course, or that space in the course. And should the other space go away, it's not lost in the current course that you copied to. Does that make sense? It does. So this way too, if I copied a whole bunch of stuff and I realize I have a typo in it, yeah. if I want to fix it, the way to be able to do that and do the global fix would be to choose the copy links one that's, because then it'll all be running off the first mm -hmm. instance of it. That's, okay. a, yep. that's a truism. Yeah. <laughs> right. So if you're trying to have a single source, better, yeah. better than this, now we're going really down a different slope, but better than worrying about it here, what I suggest you do is use the content collection. Whatever it is, uh, now you can't you can't really do that with an item in Blackboard. But if it's if it's any kind of document, file, et cetera, et cetera, if you put it in the content collection and you link to that in the content collection in whatever you're creating on your page here, then all you have to do is modify what's in the content collection, and it'll always update whatever item you put in the course content area. I don't know if that was a good segue to make, but I just wanted you to be aware of that. All right. So for instance, when we're building any kind of content, okay, what can we do? We can actually add items. This is one of the buttons we were going to talk about anyway. So you can add a file that you created. You made a Word doc and you want your students to have access to this Word doc. You could put it in there. But you could also actually have that Word doc in your content collection, and then you can link to it here. So you pick the item from the content collection and you link to it, and then whatever you've done in your content collection, so all you have to do is modify it in one place, then it's going to automatically update within this item that you're creating as well. Okay. Same thing, basically, if you use a cloud service. Um, so if you use OneDrive, which is now, you know, are fully uh, the solution of choice for all of our constituents at NCC, because now our students are fully engulfed in uh, Microsoft 365, we all have OneDrive capabilities now. So you can actually link to out to your OneDrive as well, and anything that you modify in your OneDrive is automatically modified then in Blackboard if you're using that connection all the time. Same thing down here, okay? When you attach files, you can browse for what's on your local computer, but you can also use what's in the co content connection in Blackboard. So think of the content connection in Blackboard to be something similar to 
a cloud service almost you know, where it's a file repository for you and also for others. Uh, we haven't really done a great job of explaining the content collection to everybody because it is uh, a fairly robust system in and of itself and would be rather uh, uh, a big task to take on. But indeed, it can be used not just by you, but if we put it in the right place, it can be used by people in your discipline, like LIBR, or it can be used by people in a school, like, uh, um, help me, Sandy. Uh, like the RADT? Uh, that, that would be a discipline, RADT, but they, they're under AHS, oh. LIBR, you know, uh, even though we don't call it that anymore, something like that. So. Um, that's what we could do with the content collection. Almost, it's almost like a cloud service within Blackboard. Yeah. Of course, um, using any kind of cloud service, um, we don't have just one drive, but you can also connect to a few others like Dropbox and things like that. But one drive is, is should be our solution of choice. All right, that was a big segue, but also pertains to an element that we did want to talk about here, and that is how you would add anything to the content space uh, other than text, basically. Uh, was that helpful or did I take you down a path that made confusion? No, I understood it. There's another product I have where they, they use the same thing, have the same abilities. They just call everything something else. <laughs> oh. mm -hmm. Typical. Yeah. Just curious, Sandy, um, have, have you employed any of these in the way you're doing your course or have students asked about it at all either of these two items no i have not Great. i don't i yeah my content is you know kind of set i don't have to go to the content True. collection for anything um if i had to i would put it there but um nope not me, but I'm curious, Diane, have you added any images to any of your content? Well, that was my next That was question. the biggest problem for me. That yeah. that was the biggest, yeah, that was the biggest change for me. And I'll tell you why, and it has probably nothing to do with what images you are adding. But um, in all of our standard templates, we have all, all of these icons. And we spent a lot of time figuring out what the exact margin and, you know, wrap the text and all that. I don't see, I don't have a good um, experience with wrapping the text. Do you? I don't think we have that option much anymore. Um, just, oh. you know, left justifying the text and it puts it, you know, but uh, that yeah. was a difference for me. That's that one thing I'm not happy with. That was an issue I was having, and I didn't want to insert the images as files. I wanted them in line in the text. Mm -hmm. And I guess I was copying content that had been made with the old editor. So it was text wrapped, and then it just wouldn't do it in the new editor. Well, I wonder if, um, you know, when you put, uh, when you do add content in there, you get the option to keep the formatting or not keep the formatting. I think, and I'm not sure, and I haven't really tested it out. I think when you're pasting um, in, you know, something with an image, that you should keep the formatting, and then it may look exactly the same. I haven't done that. I've just edited my own images, so I've had to play around with um, the justifying. But that may be the answer. I don't know. Okay, thank you. I'm going to try that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm not sure about that one myself, but yeah, uh, possible. The, um, the one thing I have found out about this situation, so prior to this upgrade, uh, somewhere around this vicinity, there were individualized buttons in the toolbar to put in a picture, to put yeah. in a video, to put in different kinds of content that now is encompassed entirely in this one button, and you pick and choose what you want. Yeah, I, I wondered why they left those buttons there, though. I think that's just um, to justify. Which buttons are you talking about? There? So on that third row, the first, yeah. Yeah, those buttons. Um, yeah. If you hover over, that's another good point to tip to make. When you hover over things, it does actually show you 
obviously a little bubble text of what uh, he thought yeah. you do. That's pretty helpful. And um, I think that's for tables or- This would be for tables, yeah. right. So we don't have a table, so they're actually grayed out. Uh, there's a slight difference between black and gray on this toolbar. Uh, that's yeah. another thing that some people have been concerned about yeah. is that um, the, the quote unquote default uh, size and color seems to be different. I don't think it really is. Um, and uh, there's still uh, some people sort of bantering that about, but bottom line is um, you, we can't control this at all. Some people say, how can I take it and make sure that I get the same size font all the time that I want, but you can't. The default font in this editor is controlled by Blackboard. That doesn't mean that you can't type something and then come up here and change it, select it and change it just like you would in Word, okay? Um, sorry, that was a distraction, but getting back to the whole idea of a picture. So I inserted this picture. Of course, I used this tool right here. And um, this is um, a picture of me in my younger days when I did look a lot more handsome that we used to be able to right click on the picture baby, yep. basically, and it's not, not even doing anything, but throwing up like a copy. In the old editor, it would say to us, oh, here's some li a little menu of tools where we can manipulate the picture, mm -hmm. right? And that's kind of what you may remember Diane or Sandy was talking about. And now we don't seem to have that. But in essence, does this make this editor any better? Not exactly, but then again, it makes it more universal rather than packaged is those little buttons or these the capabilities that we had before were nothing more than um, uh, prepackaged ways to do what? Play with the source code. Okay. So the answer. I was afraid you were going to say that. Yeah. yeah. The answer to what you're looking for is all on this page. So when I was asked that question the first time about this editor, what did I do? I went to source code. Oh. Of course. All right. That had some of the predefined stuff. Uh, beg your pardon. Let's see. I'm, I'm looking for. All right. Let's just go here. So I know that we do that a lot. So we have these images, and this stuff is obviously justified, right? Blah, 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 blah. So what did I do? I went here to some place where I was trying to replicate the concept. I edited it just to look at the source code, okay? What was doing it? So now I take this source code, I copy it, I bring it over into my page, and I'm not sure I'm gonna get everything exactly right here, guys. So this is just a, just a I'm showing you an example, not an exact, I'm not looking for uh, that this is exactly gonna work, I'm sorry, but this is the way I did it when I did it. And now I'm gonna go into the source code here from my picture and apply that, put a star here. And I don't know if this is really gonna work, but this is what, how it worked for me when I had to help somebody do this. So let's, oh, look at that. So it actually uh, brought a picture over, which I really didn't wanna do that, but it moved this over. And if I had text, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, I think you get the picture. Do we like it? No, but if you had to, you could, again, going back into this source code, you could figure out from this source code which, which kinds of tags you need to do the same thing. Sorry, that's all I got on this in mm -hmm. terms of good help. Um, Another reason I need to learn coding. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, right. So we yeah. all need to learn coding. It's pretty or much they need to fix it, make it easier for everybody. Yeah. Not everybody. You so know. this is what I know to this point. I beg your pardon if there really is something better out there. I have not taken the time to try to find it yet. Uh, we've all been a little too busy for that. But uh, that's the concept that I can give you when it comes to trying to wrap your text around a picture or something like that. Just steal the source code from something else because I'm not good at HTML either. I mean, I know a few of the tags and of course there's, um, if you want to uh, look up uh, Google HTML for dummies. 
Yeah, Joe, good. if you were to take that coding and then just take the image um, and replace, you know, if you wanted to replace your image in that particular, you know, coding, yeah. just get your, right. um, yeah, get the source yeah. of your there image you and replace it in that coding and it should, yeah. should it work. It might do what you want. Yeah. So yeah. in other words, when, when I come here to this HTML, I can find that image. Obviously that image is right here. That's the source of that image, that beautiful Joe image. And I can make sure that I put that back in to something up here, you know, and then and then it's gonna work, hopefully. Uh, I obviously didn't take all of the, the HTML from the previous thing to do exactly what we're trying to do here, but uh, hopefully you get the idea. So yeah, beg your pardon that uh, I don't have a good answer for you on how to make that easier than, hey, rub up on some HTML code knowledge. <laughs> All right, uh, where are we here time-wise, 11.39. So um, I don't know if there's anything much else I can really show you that's big and, and a big deal here. Obviously you have highlighting tools, you have all your co cut, copy and paste commands, uh, redo, undo, uh, different uh, justifications and indentations. We heard that you can put a table in here, symbolisms, uh, if you're doing math and stuff like that. Uh, there's there's a, a whole bunch of things that's available to you within this content editor, no doubt, okay? Hey, even emoticons now. Did we have emoticons in the previous editor, Sandy? I know it didn't uh, use them. Um, we did have a couple. Couple, yeah. But now we have, yeah. More, and now we have more, of this, more, more robust. Yeah. And you can, there are more, yeah. We just had, I think, a smiley, you know, like right. maybe the first three rows that you have here. Yeah. Right. right. So, you know, they're, again, they're trying to become more current by using this particular editor. And, and obviously, it's, it's connected to more web enhanced things that are available as well. Here's your table icon. And of course, if you put a table in, then all these other things become available. This is one nice feature that we've been touting. So if you want to find out if what you're doing is accessible, you now can use the accessibility checker and look what it tells me that this beautiful image of Joe should have an alter alternative text description so that screen readers know what the hell it is. Um, I wonder what that alternative text description would be in this case. <laughs> um, so use that, that uh, little accessibility checker. It's kind of nice. Uh, you may or may not be aware. We don't um, uh, solicit it. Uh, no, that's not the right word. We, we, we have not contracted for it because it's an extra cost, but Blackboard actually has a whole different accessibility tool called Ally. Um, and I believe that more than anything, uh, that this accessibility checker may have something to do with that. Um, and obviously it's available to us in the content editor. Um, here is some code samples that you could use. And I think this would be a little bit more related to uh, folks that are in those kinds of courses. Uh, I personally haven't seen a purpose or a reason to use this one yet, but again, uh, you may get more information out of the resources that I'm gonna provide to you in the Blackboard help area about that guy. Um, this is your preview mode. We had preview before. Uh, it used to exist up here, like in the top right hand corner. It was just, it looked like an icon that was a, like a monitor or a display screen. So if you, before you're done submitting it and you want to kind of get a look at what it's going to look like on a page, you can hit that preview button and there it is. I have personally found when I messed around with the editor that I, that I'm not always getting what I get when I actually do submit it. I don't know if you found that or not, Sandy. Um, I don't. I mean, most of the time, you know, the preview is what you get when you submit. But there have been some times where it, yeah. it's exactly uh, right. Or, or um, in, like if I embed something from Echo 360 here, um, when I go to the preview mode, I don't see that embedded. So it doesn't seem to work completely. And I don't know, again, if that's just a, a bug or a failure in this particular tool or not, but haven't had the opportunity to look into it. And of course, we have some help. This is nice because if you do want to know a little bit about some shortcuts and things like that, they are right here to help you do your job a little bit better using the editor. All right. So um, 
this is the link button where if you actually did insert some text and you wanted to link that text to something, this is the button you would use for that. All right, what's the URL, give it a title and any other parameters here that you wanna associate that with. I like that they put the URL title first and then the title because that's usually what you, <laughs> I think it used to be the opposite around yeah. the title and then the you, I think that's more convenient. I do too. More than likely you've just copied that URL from Right, some. so it's, yeah. So here you are, the first thing you're doing is pasting it and then you're saying, here's the yeah. title for it, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I agree with that, Sandy. It was a good workflow change there. Yeah. Um, so that's really it on the toolbar, but just re, re, regrouping to this, um, one all for one content adding tool. Um, here are your three common tools to produce particular files from, but also like we've had before, we used to call these mashups. Now they're just calling them additional tools. So if you use Echo 360, you can go directly to your Echo 360 library and pull in content from your Echo 360 media that you have there. This would be me. If you clicked on that, it would be you. Uh, Diane knows all about Films on Demand, I hope, and yeah. we're linking to NCC's version of that. Uh, and you could search for what, Diane? What am I searching for? Uh, yes, kittens. I don't know. Kittens. kittens. Okay, I heard you. <laughs> Hopefully we have one on kittens. If not, yeah, maybe we don't. <laughs> uh, Panthera Pardis, I don't know what that is, but whatever. Cyber Manhunt. Uh, and you get a chance to look at what's here uh, in Films on Demand. You can select that and you can put this additional information in here and then you can first preview it and then submit it. All right, it gives you an idea of what's gonna be shown on the page. And uh, oh, what the hell, we'll go ahead and put that in there. And then let's see if the preview works on this. I'm gonna click preview button up here. It does look, and I should be able to click on this again before I've actually submitted my 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 editor or whatever I'm doing. But see, it's not it's not going. The previous previewer did actually go and show these things that you put in here. But uh -huh. this do that. Yep. So I don't like the incapability of this particular preview. But so finally, I'll go ahead. I'll look, before I go ahead and submit, let's just look at the other ones here. So. We've always had Flickr. It's just a place where you can uh, pull some photos off of the web and it's all royalty free. SlideShare Presentations is a web-based PowerPoint tool, basically. Um, many people add presentations up to SlideShare and they're shareable. Uh, they can dictate how shareable they are. Uh, and you can put stuff up there yourself. That's a free tool. And of course, YouTube, which a lot of people use. Uh, let's search for kittens on YouTube. Uh, we'll oh, yeah. Get some cutesy ones, I would imagine, right? So many cute kittens. There we go. First one. And at this point, now we'll go ahead and submit and submit completely. And now we've got a real plethora. Oh, what value am I missing? Of course, the title. Uh, this one we'll call uh, Joe's Mess. <laughs> and like everything else, you know, of course, you can attach files and stuff and you can say whether they can use it and when they can't use it or see it when it's available. And of course it shows up down at the bottom and there it is, there's my mess and all that goofiness. And now I can watch this video and films on demand. It comes up in a modal or pop-up. We can obviously make it larger or make it full screen. And play that right here. Maybe you'll actually hear that too because I think I remember. But for female cats, yes, you it's do. Very yeah. different. Hey, look at that. And then here's our cute kittens. Everybody was waiting for this one. So. Oh. We've got this button down. what the content editor does. I mentioned um, a couple of other places you'll see the content editor and you know it, it may or may not be as obvious to you but if you go into the discussion board and even when you create a format 
forum yourself or you put a thread in a forum, there's that content editor. I mentioned something else about, you know, when you're grading uh, over here in the grade center, I go to the full grade center. I don't know what I'm going to find in here. I know we got some crap in here, right, Cindy? But oh, yeah. I wanted to, uh, for S. Hannigan here, make a comment to S. Hannigan. This is this mini editor that you see, but if you want the full-blown text editor, look what happens when you bring it up. It's going to be good old tiny URL. So now you got the full-blown text editor here too. So pretty much everywhere that you would put in some kind of text and other materials, you're going to find this now universally across the board in Blackboard. Um, Sandy, you have anything else to offer? Because I don't really think there's much else. No, I think we went through just about everything, unless there's something that somebody still needs clarification on. I just have a question. Um, the media, the mashups, the images that you put uh -huh. in the content editor, are there any, should you have any considerations about how much of that stuff you're including as far as like the size of the actual course site? Um, is it better to do it through the content edi editor than trying to like embed and, and upload files? Okay, so thank you for bringing that up. That's Diane. a good point. Yeah. But, but mashups, so let's get back to this. Let's go and edit this one that I created already. All right. So, so he, here's the thing, and, and maybe this is a way we, Sandy and I should be talking to people about this. You see? So anything here, and to a degree, anything here is going to add to Blackboard's bloat. And I'm just using that as a word. Obviously, it's, it's going to have to be on Blackboard. Here, 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 here is not on Blackboard. So we're not taking up any of Blackboard space by using these items, right? Only here. Um, and uh, what else can I say about that? I mean, we, I think the only thing we've ever said for the most part that we don't want you to do here is put up video. Because even a 30 second video can be megabytes. <laughs> Um, so we really do frown upon that, but that's why we give you the opportunity to use cloud-based service, to use Echo 360, um, or any of these other tools that may be video related, all right? Um, so we, we, we hope that everybody yields to that, but we know for sure, uh, Sandy and I probably saw it in many circumstances that as, uh, you know, we had obviously a flock of people go to Blackboard that were relatively unfamiliar with it and, you know, maybe weren't, weren't, have not heard about best practices and things like that before, uh, they certainly have added video files to their Blackboard pages, um, you know, and we're doing our best to get the word out to make sure that uh, that is not done going forward or if they can take them away or whatever the case may be. But obviously, 2020 was the year of uh, uh, giving leeway <laughs> to everybody everywhere. So we certainly did that too. Um, so I hope that helps. Uh, you know, the other, the, the one other place with local files that I've seen people uh, be overly aggressive might be in actually photos. I mean, even the photos that come from our phones anymore, they're all high res. And for the most part, they don't need to be high res. So I, I, I challenge people all the time before you put something up there, you know, make sure that you haven't gotten a bloated file even in and of itself. For instance, even if you're putting a doc up there, which most of the time Sandy and I would say, oh yeah, doc's no big deal. Yeah. And a doc with text. But let's just say you have a document and it has five, six, seven, eight pictures in it. Yeah. To take some space. High res pictures. Well, guess what? That doc file is going to be a pretty big file, relatively speaking, as far as doc files go. So keep that in mind, whatever you're putting up there, make try to make the size relevantly small to the degree you can. Now, I always tell people who are in, you know, sciences and things like that, that we don't want you to, to I'll use the word, compress your files to the point where you're losing resolution that's important in showing some very discrete information in a picture or a video or anything else. So, you know, you always take that with a grain of salt. 
but where it's unnecessary, you don't put in a, you know, a 12 megapixel picture where you can use a two megapixel picture or less. Um, so that's, that's just a good rule of thumb for everybody. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. So your rule of thumb is to keep it, you know, as small as you can, whether it's um, a link, a URL out to somewhere, whether it's the embedded code to something that you have, or, you know, if you're using the, these mashups, I think they look really nice in the course too, when you have a little um, thumbnail of the YouTube video or the films on demand. So you can just you know, look at it and see exactly what what you're going to view when you, you know, open it up. Right. Anything else while I'm on this page? Nope. I don't think so. My mind has been blown. <laughs> and Diane, um, you know what? Um, I just tried something too. Um, so let's just say that you're copying um, something, you know, you want to put a whole item from your course into another course and you don't want to do the whole move or the copy. If you just copy the entire, um, the entire um, code, it will come over into your, your course exactly the way it was. So it's keeping the formatting through the code. Yep. Yep. Thank you. It's kind of always the way it's been because black yeah. is nothing more than web pages, basically. It's just structured web pages uh, that work with uh, a bunch of tools and features that are a part of the Blackboard platform. So, you know, it's always been about coding. It's just that, you know, we don't really want that to be a part of our everyone, every user's experience. But I think um, a little bit more and more, we, we have to become somewhat familiar with that aspect of it. What do you think of that, John? Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I still you, want to are write. Are you ready to be a programmer, John? <laughs> nah, I don't think so. <laughs> I still want to right click for uh, copy and paste, and that is, we'll never see that anywhere again. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They, they, they've even taken that away in some cases, but. You know, yeah, I just, I just learned that way. That's what I've always done, but. Things are constantly evolving. That's Changing, yeah. The world we definitely are in now. Um, so uh, hopefully that means they're evolving for the better. But occasionally, you know, you get two steps forward and one step back. Yeah. We all just have to be uh, a little more adaptable than we ever have been. And uh, um, <laughs> shall I use this terminology? Trust that the people that are behind creating and making these things better are doing the right things and. Uh, uh, and listening to everybody that that create that provides suggestions, comments, and other things. But, yeah. All right, I think that's all I have. And wait a minute, wait a minute. Is Sarah still here? Because if she is, I want her to know that it's four minutes before noon, and I'm done. <laughs> Joe, are you going to share that? You, yeah, are you going to share that document? Um, Where right. are you going to? Yeah, you guys talk for a second while I see if I can find the link to it. Okay. Right. Oh, otherwise we can send it out separately. No, I'll see if I can get it right now. I'll put it in there. Uh, boy, somebody's cooking something and it smells good downstairs. <laughs> All right, I think I found it. Nobody has anything to say? <laughs> no, we're just watching you look for your file. Oh, do I still? I don't have it on yet, do I? No, <laughs> which I always do. You know, there's, and, and so what Blackboard will tell us if we were to call them up and say, hey, why is this this way or that way? They'll say, we look at the most important issues and there's always a give and take. What is most important? And then they just go down the list, so. It's not so bad. My other system that I was mentioning is the LibGuide system, and they just added a oh LibGuide. Yeah, they just added a consulting service so you can like go and have you know work with somebody to do what you want to do. And I told everybody, it's like this is dangerous. I'm going to be contacting this consultant all the time. Uh, I think Marshall in our group knows LibGuide. 